Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, I actually found something really, really interesting that I think a lot of you are going to be benefiting from, especially if you're using Photoshop, but you can also do this with other stuff. So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks. Uh, what I'm talking about is uh, how to upscale an image. So thanks to a lot of improvements in technology, it is possible nowadays to render an image at a low resolution and then upscale it later for print for just final presentation, stuff like that. Now, why is this something that could be useful? I wouldn't recommend using this method to render like a full film or like a full commercial, but if you're doing stills, imagine you are tasked by a client to do like a concept art or things like that, and you need to do like big scenes, really heavy scenes with like trees, reflections, refractions, like everything, right? And you're rendering and your computer takes, I don't know, let's say four hours to render a 10, uh, like a full HD image, right? 1920 by 1080. So four hours is actually like in the ballpark of a, like a super complex scene. It's normal to get a render of four hours when you're using traditional uh, rendering engines. But what if then the client asks you and says, hey, this looks amazing, but we're gonna print this in a big building or something. And uh, when we scale the image, of course, it gets pixelated. Could you render this at 4K? And you're like, damn, if it took four hours to render at, at one, like a full HD, it's gonna take four times as long to render at 4K. So that's gonna be a lot of time. So how can we fix that? Well, I have this old project that we did. Um, it was one of the first projects we did last year when we first started, uh, or when I first started working here on the channel. And um, as you can see, it's just a helmet. It's not great. Uh, we do have an HDRI right here, which is giving us like a, actually it seems like it didn't find the texture or something. Let's add another one. Let's add this uh, like uh, castle thing right here. There we go. So now if we render, we should have a main light coming from the top. And as you can see, this like field light on the on the sides. I'm going to select the HDRI. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, like delete the camera visibility so that we don't see it. We have an alpha channel. And uh, I'm also going to bring the exposure up to zero. So the base exposure that we would normally get. There we go. This looks a little bit better, right? Like, a little bit more realistic. Uh, this is a very basic three-point light setup, which, by the way, is one of those things that a lot of people asked about, about rendering. We've covered this before, but if you want me to cover it again, let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to do so. Uh, so the three-point light, as you can see, we have our main light right here hitting our character. Uh, we have our field light, which is just making sure that the shadows are not as dark. And now we're going to be adding a rim light, or a, a um, sometimes they call it... It has like a backlight. Sometimes they call it like a backlight. I, I've always known it as a, as a rim light. But uh, the purpose of the rim light is to separate the object or the character from the background. So we're going to position this on the opposite side of the camera at a little bit of an angle, like this. We are definitely going to increase the exposure. Let's try something like a 14. I am going to use the color temperature, and I want to make this uh, a little bit colder. So let's go for like a cool uh, temperature right there. And we do this, and there we go. That's the uh, that's the that's the effect right there. Now, as you can see, that's a little bit too much. So let's go back down to twelve. Um, I think I'm gonna make this bigger. I'm gonna change the spread a little bit so it's a little bit sharper. And then, of course, we're gonna have to bring the this thing down. Um, I'm able to do this because I'm working with GPU, and uh, as we've uh, talked about before, in one it was that, that was also a little bit of a controversial video. There was a lot of uh, opinions and uh, and facts as well on the comments. So thank you for everyone for the input. As I mentioned there, I'm not an expert at the like like engineering of so software side of things, so I can't tell you exactly what uh, that is. But uh, hopefully that little example uh, gave you a little bit of perspective on on which one is. Um, could be working. I really like, I, I've been using a lot of GPU in the last couple of months because it's really fast. And unless I'm, I'm rendering like, again, like full scenes, uh, like this full GPU or, or GPU has is, is been working quite nice. So there we go. So as you can see, we got this helmet right here. And uh, this is supposed to be the 100% like zoom. Let me, I'm gonna let the, the render like run so we can see the, the percentage of zoom. But here, this is the one-to-one. -one. So when you see this here, down here on the Arnold option, this is the, the size at which the image is gonna be displayed on a monitor. This right now, I'm, I'm rendering it at 1024 by 1024. Um, so there we go. But if we want to scale this, like if we were to do four times the zoom so that it is a 4K image, this is what we would get. Right, so we would start seeing the pixels. So if I were to print this in a big like blanket or something, we would definitely get the pixels. But I'm gonna show you a very cool little trick that you can do with this. I'm gonna save this image. You can save this as JPEG, by the way. This is perfectly fine. I'm gonna save it on the desktop for now. My desktop is getting <laughs> more cluttered every um, every time, but there we go. So now we're gonna jump into Photoshop, and this is something that I uh, recently learned. This is relatively new to Photoshop. I can't tell you exactly when this thing got uh, like approved or 
implemented, but it's really, really, really cool. And then I'm going to show you a free option if you don't have Photoshop. So this guy right here, uh, as we mentioned, this is a, a 1K image. If we go here to image, image size, you can see that this is a 1K image at 72 DPI, which is like the traditional uh, rendering like settings that we do. But again, if we wanted to like print this in a super big uh, like uh, format, then uh, it wouldn't work because we would get pixelation. And I don't want to go back and render this at 4K. Maybe you don't even have the image anymore. Or you lost the files or something. Well, we can do something called a neural filter right here. So I'm going to double click this one. Let's say filter, neural filters, and uh, the neural filters are using, um, what's the word? They're using uh, artificial intelligence, right? Like uh, computing things, <laughs> computing magic, I call it, uh, to uh, like guess or, or not guess uh, precisely, to, to estimate how things would look at different uh, elements. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of things. I, this is the first time I opened it here. I just saw a, a preview. Um, earlier today I was like damn this looks pretty cool so this one the super zoom is the one that we're gonna do uh, we need to download the filter so let's download real quick and once this is downloaded as you can see here uh, we can select how much zoom we want to uh, create right so right now if we click here one two and three I believe that's what we're gonna be doing and as you can see this is gonna be happening. I actually want a new document right here I'm gonna hit OK so what this is going to do, as you can see right now, it just created a new document at 4K resolution. So if we go image, image size, this is now, as you can see, 4,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels. In seconds, like it took nothing. It, it, it was completely, completely done in a second. And as you can see here, it approximates the details like really, really, really well. If we take a look at the zoom here, like look at the, the amount of like dirt and stuff that we have right there. And it does a pretty damn good job at creating this super amazing detail. Is it going to be perfect? No, of course not, because it's an approximation. It's trying to guess what the best possible things. You can see a little bit of the banding and color errors on, on some of the of the parts right here. But as you can see, this is a great, great way, great, great way to do it. This is not the first image like upscaler that I've seen, um, but it's the first time I, I like knew or, or uh, got notice about uh, it being integrated directly inside of. Um, inside of uh, Photoshop. Now there's one more filter here. I'm going to go neural filters again. There's another filter to this one, JPEG artifact removals. So when you compress in JPEGs, sometimes you're going to get a little bit of um, uh, like artifacts, like just pixels that don't look as good. So as you can see, this one's taking definitely a little bit longer, especially because it's a, whoa. Sorry, I had to pause the, the video right there because um, when this thing is working, it's using, of course, uh, your processing power and it, it's difficult to record and uh, and process everything at the same time. But yeah, this that filter that I just showed right there will remove a couple of the artifact, artifacts and it might make your image look a little bit cleaner. Now, uh, this is something that you can use for a lot of things. Like uh, if you have a, a, a like favorite game, uh, like a video game, and you have like a wallpaper and you want to upscale it, it can work. The, the uh, Like this upscale that we did right here, as you can see, it, it does a great, great job. About that conserving a lot of the details so it's an amazing amazing tool now as i mentioned this is not only available it's been along uh, around for a while but if you look image upscaler there's gonna be a lot of them out here like this one like the first one right so again you just grab an image and it will try its best to find how it works the only thing that i don't like about this one's right here is that most of them will ask you or they will only give you like five samples per day or stuff like that um, but yeah, again, it's a, it's a really, really good way to, to create new artwork while, while not doing all of the work again, like not, not doing all of the render again. Would I use this for a full commercial or for something? No, definitely not. But, uh, for everything else, I think it's a, it's a really, really good thing. So yeah, this is, I think that's pretty much it, uh, of what I wanted to show with this one, guys. I know this was a short video. Um, also, if you have uh, managed to wait until the very end of the video, then, uh, congratulations, because you're going to be able to see the little commercial we did for our free course that we're giving away. I don't have the access to see how many people have redeemed this one, but I think there's still a couple of them left. So if you want to make, uh, if you want to get yourself a free premium course, check this out. Hey guys, Abraham here. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for your continued support towards the channel. And thanks to that, today we're giving away to 1,000 lucky winners the 
full ZBrush character likeness course by Victor Yamakado. In this course, Victor will share with you all of the tips, tricks, and techniques that he uses to create amazing looking characters. If that's something you're interested in, if you want to bring your ZBrush level to the next step, then make sure to check down here in the description of this video and input your email address and the name that we can use to get the course to you. We promise not to spam your inbox. We're only going to be sharing important information about our courses, our classes, and all of the cool information that you need for your 3D journey. And again, thank you very much, guys. Make sure to click on the link. Only the first 1,000 subscribers will get this course. So quickly go there and check that one out. Also, remember that every single like, share, and comment helps us. So thank you again for your continued support. And let's go back to the video. And there we go. Now, uh, while well, this thing was running, I, I was trying to, to do a little bit of thinking. And um, I realized that even though I just mentioned that I would probably not use this upscaling solution for a full commercial, mainly because I was thinking about, like, imagine having to open all of the images. Uh, you can actually batch process this. Like, it would be possible to select a folder with all of your renders and then batch process this. So technically, it could be done. Like, you could have a, a full, like, 300 frames of information. And if you want to scale them to 4K, which in rendering time would be enormous amount of, uh, of time, uh, this could be a solution. So if anyone gives it a try, let me know in the comments because I, I think that could be another potential usage for this uh, particular effect. And that's it, guys. Thank you very much. I know that we still have some of the projects pending. Don't worry. We'll get back to them. And, um, yeah, I'll see you back tomorrow. Remember to leave a like, share, subscribe. All of that stuff helps us a lot. We're really, really close to 29 thousand subscribers which is amazing uh i was i was thinking about maybe maybe we'll be able to get thirty thousand subscribers uh by my birthday which is going to be august 30 so next tuesday i'm not sure it's it will be a really really big challenge but if you have friends and they haven't subscribed and you want to help us out that would be a great uh, birthday present for me as well so yeah thank you very much guys i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye